I wanted to show off an automation project I've been working on for the Runic Altar from Batania. This is the Enigmatica 2 Expert mod pack, with a bunch of other 1.12 mods like Applied Energistics. That guy. The goal of this build was to kind of have a sleeker looking area where it wasn't surrounded by redstone, looked a little cleaner. But I also wanted flow control so it didn't overload the system and I'd be able to ask for many crafts at once and it wouldn't send the next recipe until the previous one was done. And I also wanted it to stop if the mana pool got too low or it wasn't at an acceptable level. I guess for starters, I'll show how you actually activate the uh, the runic altar because once it drops the items and it's got enough mana you have to click on it with the wand of the forest and i use a mechanical user with the wand of the forest inside this config here use item on block right click upper left and i like to use this with the redstone on so it needs a redstone signal i don't want it just clicking all the time i feel like that can't be good for the world but not sure. But anyways, this is a red string comparator here. It's hard to see, but you see that red line that's kind of going right there, actually? Oh, you can see it the whole time. <laughs> that's funny. But what it actually does is it looks for the first uh, block, I believe, within a six block radius of, this, of whatever direction it's aiming, in this situation that's up, that uh, emits a redstone. And the mechanical user doesn't emit a redstone. It's only the altar that does. So what happens is, is when this starts crafting, this actually turns to a one, and the comparator can pull a one out of this thing. And uh, once the craft is done, it gives a two. Then it goes into this repeater, goes up the torch tower, and it toggles this so it's activated. I'll demonstrate that here with the rune of fire. So once it's crafting, it's a 1. And I quickly switched to 2, activated the torch tower, and it was done. And then also I can talk about this thing here since I have the wand out. It's kind of a cool, cool thing I've never played with before. But again, I am reading the, uh, the mana pool down below. And I'm pulling out a redstone signal. So right now... Yeah, there, this makes this easier to uh, visualize. But uh, this is pulling an 8 out of this pool. It's pretty full. 8 out of 15. And that's the same thing that's happening up here. So 8's coming out, but uh, notice I have this in subtraction mode. So 8, and then whatever's coming out of here, I guess I could do the math on that, but uh, it must be 9. Because 9 minus this 8 is the one and i just stuck enough items in here to kind of ballpark have a decent amount of mana i don't want this thing dropping below half you can uh you know, adjust it as you need but for me i just threw in a an item that doesn't smelt and coal and it gives a redstone output of nine into this subtraction mode to the repeater so basically this is where my recipe gets pushed into when i ask for a craft if I was to take that redstone off, ask for a rune of fire, what happens is my A2 system pushes the ingredients into the ender chest, plus this uh, runic token I'll have to talk about after, but basically it's just an ardite coin that I send with the recipe and it never leaves, and then later it gets sucked out once the recipe is confirmed complete. But we have extract on redstone. And we've got blacklisted this token, so it will never leave. And then everything else goes through this open crate from Batania, just drops down below. So if my mana pool gets too low, the system will just hang up here and you can see from the AE2 system. It's just hung up. And eventually, once this mana pool gets full, the redstone will click on and it'll continue dropping the items. I guess the next thing that's important is this uh, floating hopper hawk. 
this is kind of a cool device that I've never really played with before. If you take your wand that's usually in binding mode and you shift right click, it'll go to function mode. Then if you hold shift and right click, you can say pick up any item, pick up items only in the frame, and pick up items not in the frame. And so what I've done here is I have a frame on this crate and it will not pick up living wood because living wood is like a catalyst you need for that craft to complete. So you never want to pick up the living wood. And then also for my own testing, I have it uh, blacklisting this mana tablet that I want to be able to easily refill that pool when I was testing this circuitry out. So yeah, it just doesn't pick up these tablets or the living. Basically, it's got a range that's pretty decent, especially when it's powered by that mana pool down there. I think it can search like 10 blocks, so it can easily pick up any of the items down here. Since it's powered by that, it uses a tiny bit of mana. It, uh, it has a pretty decent range. You can see that little green check mark there by the uh, in the center of the screen by the mana pool icon. But yeah, so the hopper will put items into the crate next to it. The crate actually has to be like next to it, either above it or beside it. It can't be. I think one block space doesn't work. So I have it below here. What happens is, is once the recipe is completed, it will suck the items into here. And there's kind of a delay. It actually allows the items to drop and they all get picked up by the runic altar before the hopper hawk actually picks the items up. So it only actually picks up the uh, craft, the final, uh, final craft. So it sticks the items in here. And then once the items are in here, I have this uh, red stringed comparator again. I think I've used it three times in this build. I just learned how it uh, worked tonight and it's awesome. But what it's doing is it's checking that chest. You can see how it's highlighted there. It's checking the contents. And as soon as I stick one item, and it doesn't matter what, what item it is, as soon as I stick one item in, you get that pulse coming through here. It detects a one into this block and then it energizes this piece of redstone as a one, which goes into these repeaters. And there's an ME import bus right here. And this is important. You have to have the redstone card and you have to have activate once per pulse. You don't want it on active with signal or without. The, the pulse is important. And then the acceleration cards are important because some of the runes you get three items back. The the rune that you start with, plus you get the, uh, how do I say that? The rune of winter, for instance, you'll get this back, plus you'll get back these, they're not used up. So you actually get three runes back. And then some of the basic runes, you just get the two runes back. So it's very important to have these acceleration cards in here, so it pulls out all the items at once. And then that's that path. And then of course, once those items get pulled out, this redstone turns off. But at the same time that that's happening, this repeater is pushing into this import bus where we have the same redstone card and the pulse set up. But this one, you don't want the acceleration cards because as soon as that one token leaves, you don't need, um, I think no acceleration cards pulls one item at a time. So you only wanted to pull that token because if there's any kind of like a server hiccup or a race condition, whatever you call it, it could potentially grab the next recipe that comes in right away. So you don't want this to be fast. You just want it to grab that one token and be done with it. I guess I could show that again here. If we ask for fire, you can watch this comparator. As soon as it blinks, we'll see that get sucked out. And if I would have asked for another recipe, it would have filled it in again with the next uh, batch of ingredients. And if you're wondering how I fill the ender chest up, back over here, it's just a simple, uh, instead of using the ME interface, I'm using this add-on mod, the packager and the unpacker from Packaged Auto. Basically the unpacker works like the interface does and the packer has to also be on the network these two things actually work together. 
and this encoder doesn't have to be on the network. So this is basically what's configured in them. Whoops, I just got rid of that. Click load to get it back. So gluttony, for instance, I send the living rock, all this stuff, plus my token, the fire rune, same thing, living rock, and my token. And just the same thing through it all. And this is just a really nice way to do a lot of stuff. So that's why I use this instead of the basic. I always forget, forget what this is called. Interface. One goes in here. One goes in here. And also, of course, blocking mode enabled is very important. If you don't have this on, it will just flood that ender chest full items. So basically, these two blocks have to be on the network if you're not familiar with them. They're like an add-on to Applied Energistics. They don't have, have to be beside each other. I just happen to stick the packer here. Usually you could stick the packer anywhere else, but the unpacker does have to be next to the chest because it actually pushes the items from the unpacker into the ender chest, which of course goes right there. Why? Why do you want this? Well, an Enigmatica 2 expert, if you just you know want a lot of runes, be able to ask for 10 of them and to have it just make all of this stuff incident free is fantastic. You can hit start. And actually, this would be a good check too. At some point, this pool is going to run out of juice. Notice too when the craft completes. That hopper hawk seems to pick up all the items. It doesn't matter if it's two of the same or if it's three different runes. It picks them all up at once and sticks them in that crate. Aha, here we go. So redstone zero. So now the next recipe does not get pulled out until we are able to refill this. And I have managed to miss. Oh, good lord. I really messed this up, didn't I? So, in that situation, I wrecked that. And if you're walking by with a magnet, I guess you're also going to, to wreck the craft. So, the way that I will fix that is to just take this token out and accept that one of these recipes is going to get hung up. It's not going to fully complete the order because I, I disturbed it. But if I don't get in the way again, 90% of it will get complete. But yeah, let me know what you thought. I thought this was pretty cool and I spent most of tonight working on it. And I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of these red string, red string comparators. Never used them before, never really heard of them. I just happened to see them here when I typed in comparator. Then of course I had to Google it to figure out how it worked, but it is a very, very cool block. The fact that it lets you see at least six different things in front of it. 